So we're going to talk about how to simplify a radical e expression today. So we have a radical. It's a square root of 37,800. X to the ninth, Y to the fourth, Z to the fifth. Anytime you have a radical, your teacher is most likely going to want it in a simplified form and not in a decimal. If it comes out to a decimal in your calculator, that tells you it doesn't come out evenly and it needs to be simplified if it can be. So we're going to talk about how to do the simplification process. The first thing I want to make sure we all know is some terminology because I'm going to refer to things by their terms and I need to make sure we know what they are. So the first thing we have is the radical symbol itself. That would be the actual square root sign, not the numbers around it, inside, outside, nothing like that, just the actual symbol. So we have the radical symbol, so the square root. Your index tells you what type of a square root, what type of a radical it is. So if it's a square root, your index is two. If it's a cubed root, your index is three. A fourth root, it's four, so on and so forth. Anything other than your square roots, the index goes at the very front inside the hook of the radical symbol. Cubed roots, you would have a little three written there. Square roots, we don't write them because square roots are the most commonly found radicals that we have. So we just, if it doesn't have a number, we know the index is two. It's a square root. Okay. The last thing we have in a radical is the radicand. So the radicand is the inside. It is not any numbers outside. It is not what type of root it is. It is not the radical symbol itself. It is just whatever is underneath the radical. So I think of the radical as kind of like a little house. And so the radicand is anything that's inside the house. So the 37,800, the x to the ninth, y to the fourth, and the z to the fifth are all part of the radicand. Okay? So the first thing we're going to do in this problem is we're going to take the radicand and break it into prime factors. We want to take the 37,800 and break it up into all numbers that cannot break up further. We're going to take the x to the ninth, the y to the fourth, the z to the fifth, and I'm going to go ahead and break those up too just to get the concept of what we're trying to do here. There are some different ways you can do the variables as well. There's 10 different ways to do this entire problem. So this is just my favorite way. This is by no way, shape, or form the only way to do simplifying radicals. So the way I'm going to do it, I'm going to start with a factor tree. And that's just because my mind organizes things in a very visual, unorganized way is how my mind works. Your mind may not work the same way. You may not like factor trees. That's perfectly fine. And it is your ability to do things in different ways. Not everyone has to do the same thing in the same way. So when I break this up into a factor tree, you can start by two and break it up by two and two and two and two and two and two, but that might take a while. So what I notice is I notice it ends in two zeros. So right off the bat, I'm going to say I could divide it by a hundred because two zeros are in a hundred, two zeros are here. I'm going to take 37,800 and divide by a hundred. So 100 times 378 should give me 37,800. Then I can take the 100 and say, does it break up farther? 100 is the same thing as 10 times 10. Okay. Once you break a number up, I go ahead and cross it out. That way I don't accidentally use it again later on. It's broken up, it's dealt with, I don't want to use it again. 10, can it be broken up more? 10 is two times five. Same thing for this one, two and five. 2, nothing times anything is 2 other than 1 in itself. So we don't need to break it up any farther if the only things that can go into it are 1 in itself. If other numbers can, you need to make sure it's going all the way to prime numbers. 378, the way I would start with 378 is I notice it's even. Any even number should be able to be divided by 2. So 378 divided by 2 gives us 189. I broke 378 up, I'm going to cross it out. I can't break 2 up anymore, but the 189, it's no longer even, so it cannot divide by 2. If it can't divide by 2, try 3. If we do 189 divided by 3, it breaks up into 63. From the 63, I mean, there's two ways you could go. There's many, many, many ways you can go. You do not have to use the numbers I'm using. From 63, if you know that it's 9 times 7, you could use that. If you don't right off the bat recognize it as 9 times 7, you're welcome to continue by 3s. 
if you want. It's still not even, so we can't divide by two. But if you were to divide it by three, then you would have three times 21. And then from 21, you would have the three and the seven. If you had done nine and seven from 63, you're still gonna get a three, a three, and a seven, so it doesn't matter which numbers you use, as long as they do actually multiply to make the number that they came from. Okay. So that's all my prime factors. I have two, a five, a two, a five, a seven, three, 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 and a two. I also, in this number inside of my radicand, have nine x's. x to the ninth is x times x times x, all the way until you have nine of them. Okay, so we have nine x's. We have four y's. And we have five z's. Make sure your z's do not look like twos. I have a lot of my students that can't read their own handwriting. And I had on the test, they just finished grading a couple weeks ago. I had one student that a one became a nine. And then that nine got changed to some other number. And by the end of the problem, they had just lost complete control of what they were doing because they couldn't read their own handwriting. Make sure you can read your own handwriting. Okay, so I put a little bar through my Z's so that they do not look the same as my twos. All right, so what we're gonna do next, there's many different ways to explain it. Again, this is just my favorite way. What I think about when I think about radicals. In my head, numbers are all little people. They run around, they have conversations. It's absolute chaos, but it works to make sense for in my head. So I'm gonna try to explain that way for anyone that maybe it hasn't made sense the mathematical, logical way, and they need another way to think about it. So in my head, the radical symbol is kind of like a house. So we have this house, and inside this house, it's like a, frater a fraternity sorority situation where a bunch of people who aren't related happen to be living together. Okay, so I have my radical symbol, and I'm gonna take my numbers, my prime numbers are my people that are living there. And what they want to do is they kind of want to go out on dates because we're people, we have lives, we may want to go out on dates with other people. When you go on a date with someone else, if they are the exact opposite personality with you, the date's probably not going to go very well. One or both people are going to be sitting there bored out of their mind while the other one talks about something that they could care less about. So when you go on a date with someone, ideally you want them to be of a similar personality and have similar interests to you. So the numbers are very similar. If two and five went on a date together, they don't have much in common. They're both gonna be bored, it's not gonna be a very good date. In order for them to have a good date, they need to go on a date with someone that's very similar to them. So the twos could go on a date together. And when they go on a date, they're gonna leave the house. So they're gonna go outside of the house. So now on a date, you're not two separate people, you're one couple. You order a table, you're not gonna sit at two separate tables, you're gonna be at one table. So when they go outside of the house, they go outside of the house as one. So this group of twos going on a date, is gonna go outside of the house as one group. One group of two, so only one two gets written down on the outside of the house. And I left some space because we're gonna have quite a few things coming outside of the house. The fives, they can go on a date. Two and five may not have wanted to go on a date together, but the twos can go on one date. The fives can go on another date and get along just fine. So we have a set of five, that is one group of five. So I'm gonna put the five outside, and when you put things outside, they all get multiplied together. Sometimes when people go on dates, they might multiply. Sometimes. Other numbers that can go on dates. So we've got a seven, a three, a three, a three, and a two. Well, two of the threes could go on a date. And they get to leave the house. The seven, it doesn't have anyone it's got in common with. It's just got the three and the two. So the seven doesn't get to go on a date, it has to stay home. The three, well it has something in common with one of these, but they're already gone, it doesn't want to be a third wheel. So it also stays home. And the two has no one else it could go on a date with. 
that's going to stay home as well. So that's how you deal with the numbers. Again, everything's going to get multiplied together. So 2 times 5 times 3 gives me 30. 7 times 3 times 2 gives me 42. So I still left some spaces. Again, everything will end up getting multiplied together, but I need to put my variables in there. So I've dealt with all the numbers, but I still have all these variables. These variables, there's still people too. They still want to go on dates, just like everyone else. So we've got a group of X's, another group of X's, a third group of X's, and a fourth group of X's. That gives us four groups that are going out on dates. So that is going to give us outside of the house x to the fourth power. Four groups, four x's. For the y's, we have two groups, two pairs of y's. And for the z's, we also only have two pairs. Left home, I have one x. All the Y's are gone. They all left the house. I don't have any that have to stay home. And I have one Z. Gives me 30 X to the fourth Y squared Z squared times the square root of 42 X Z. That would be your simplified radical. Okay. If you had something other than a square root, if your index was larger, cubed root of fourth root of fifth root, all that does is that tells you how many numbers have to be in a group. So if it was a cubed root, each group needs to have three of the same number. If it was a fifth root, each group would need to have five of the same number. If it was a seventh root, each group would need to have seven of the same number. Your index tells you how many pieces are in each group in order for them to be able to go outside of the house. Right. So starting off, prime factor as your number. Figure out how many groups you can have based off of your index. Remember, index is what type of a root it do we have. Variables, same thing. Everything outside of the house gets multiplied together. That gets multiplied by your radical symbol, and everything left home gets multiplied together as well. Any questions, comment, email, whatever you need.